Snake antivenom is still considered as the treatment of choice for snake bites, even after a century from its discovery. Hence, it is important to have a proper understanding about snake antivenom. This presentation gives you an introduction to antivenom including what is snake antivenom, how is antivenom produced, types of antivenom, uses of antivenom, indications for antivenom usage, how does antivenom work and problems of antivenom administration. Antivenom contains polyclonal immunoglobulins or immunoglobulin fragments which are raised against venom of one or more species of snake. The antivenom raised against one species of snake is known as monovalent while the antivenom raised against several species of snakes is known as polyvalent. Antivenom is produced using host animals such as horse, sheep and camel. How is antivenom produced in the industrial level? The immunoglobulins in the antivenom is produced against the epitopes of the snake venom. Therefore, the initial step is to extract venom from the particular type of snake. The next step is to inject a sublethal dose of venom, a dose which is not harmful to the horses. Multiple doses of snake venom are injected to the horses with several intervals. The venom acts as the antigen which triggers the host immune system to produce immunoglobulins. The next step is to collect the host blood, isolate and separate the specific immunoglobulins in the plasma. Caprylic acid precipitation is a commonly used procedure for this purpose in industrial antivenom production. Then isolated and purified immunoglobulins are arranged into glass bottles either in liquid or powder forms with preservatives as antivenom. There are three types of immunoglobulins that are used in the current practice which differ in both pharmacodynamic and pharmacokinetic properties. The commonest type is IgG which is the largest among the immunoglobulins used. It is a whole immunoglobulin and the size is about 150 kilodaltons. FAP2 is a medium size partially digested whole immunoglobulin with an average molecular weight of 50 kilodaltons. The smallest type of molecule used for antivenom is FAB which has an average molecular weight less than 50 kilodalton. The smaller molecules have a fast access to peripheries which is beneficial during the snake bite but smaller molecules are easily eliminated via kidneys and the reticular endothelial system. Hence, the effective time of venom action in the body is reduced. In the process of purification of FAB2 and FAB molecules, the FAB C fragment is removed. FC fragment triggers immune reaction in the recipient to produce anaphylaxis. Therefore, unlike the whole immunoglobulins, FAB causes minimum reactions in the recipient during its administration. Antivenom is produced based on animal serum. Therefore, it can cause mild to severe allergic reactions including anaphylaxis when administered. Hence, it is a must to administrate antivenom only when it is crucial. Types of the snakes differ from region to region. Therefore, unique antivenom should be developed to treat envenoming in a specific region. The recommended route for administration of antivenom is intravenous route as it is facilitate injection of a massive dose of antivenom to target sites within a short period of time. Benefit of administration via intramuscular route is yet to be proven but it is used in some rare occasions. Indications for administration of antivenom vary from region to region. In Sri Lankan guidelines for administration of antivenom, clinical features due to envenoming play a major role. 
they can be divided into three main parts as local effect of envenoming, non-specific systemic effects and most importantly the organ specific effect of envenoming. For example, activation of coagulation cascade by toxins in snake venom led to coagulopathy. Similarly, it can cause neurotoxicity and nephrotoxicity. Presence of these organ specific signs of envenoming is a pure indication for administration of antivenom. Several local effect of envenoming are also an indication for antivenom administration. For example, swelling or necrosis of more than half of the limb due to a cobra bite is considered as an indication for administration of antivenom in Sri Lankan setup. But none of the local effect due to other snake bites are considered as indication to give antivenom in Sri Lanka. In addition to the clinical features, any abnormal laboratory investigation report showing systemic envenoming is considered as an indication for antivenom administration. For example, any abnormal PTINR test, APTT indicating coagulopathy or abnormal serum creatinine, blood urea suggesting renal injury are indications for antivenom administration. The Indian antivenom used in Sri Lanka is only indicated in the cobra bites, crates, soy scale wiper and Russell swiper bite. It is not indicated in envenomation in sea snake, hump nose wiper, green pit wiper or any other snake envenoming in the country. Let us look into the mechanism of action of antivenom. Immunoglobulins in antivenom bind with snake venom toxins in the victim circulation and block the binding of toxins to the target tissues. This is known as neutralization of the toxin. The antivenom venom complexes which is a larger molecule prevents venom from reaching to the peripheral sites. Elimination of antivenom venom complex is achieved via the reticular endothelial system and finally through the renal clearance. The main problem with antivenom administration is adverse reactions to its contents. Snake antivenom is one of the medication causing highest reaction rates. It varies between 30 to 85 percent for Indian antivenom. More importantly, a significant proportion of these reactions are life threatening. They can be classified into two main categories as immediate and delayed reactions. All the subcutaneous manifestations, gastrointestinal manifestations, cardiac manifestations and anaphylactic shock are immediate reactions. Serum sickness which develops after 5 to 6 days from antivenom administration is classified as a delayed reaction. Therefore, closely monitoring the patient after initiation of antivenom treatment is vital and it is a must to arrange the medication for the treatment of this reaction at bedside before the administration of antivenom. Some research have showed that the prophylactic administration of adrenaline before the use of antivenom can significantly minimize the early adverse reactions to the snake antivenom. In summary, Antivenom should be administered only when it is indicated due to the risk of developing life threatening reactions. Monitoring for reactions after administration of antivenom is very important, mainly during the first 15 minutes, although the risks extend up to the first 2 hours after the antivenom infusion. Research show that the prophylactic use of adrenaline reduces the incidence of adverse reactions due to the antivenom. And as explained above, early antivenom administration would prevent complications of snake endonomy. This concludes this presentation and thank you.